Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. And as always, I do appreciate each and every one of you for clicking on this video and taking the time to watch. And um, just kind of uh, doing a little bit of cosmetic work out here this afternoon. And uh, if you recall, I was going to bond a little piece in right here along this edge, along the bottom edge of that upper panel right there. Uh, if you remember, I said I was originally I was originally going to bond that piece in in order to uh, have that line run along right about where my finger's at and uh, sort of just blend in back here oh, right about four or five feet from the bow. And uh, I was looking at this boat the other day. I was over here other side of the garage doing something I don't remember exactly what I was doing but I just happened to kind of glance over and I, I looked at the boat and uh, got to thinking I said you know it does not look bad just the way it is and this line right here this line right here and that would be the upper panel it, it just has a real gentle curve right about here where it slopes up towards the bow and I said that you know really does not look all that bad so I decided to go ahead and ditch this idea and what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to bond a couple of pieces in uh, right up here at the nose just to um, just to address this edge right here because uh, when I built this I originally designed it for this this line right here to come all the way up to this corner. I've mentioned that before in previous video, but uh, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to leave this just the way it is with the exception of this little filler piece right here that I've made. And oh, it took me a few hours to make this yesterday. And I'm just going to bond that in place. And uh, as you can see right there, it, it's just going to kind of taper and fare into that bottom panel right where my hands at and uh, I just set up my router and made kind of a little impromptu or, or I should say an improvised um, router sled and uh, just brought that to a real real narrow taper right there and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to have uh, this line right here Okay, there we go. Let me find my hand. And uh, it's going to kind of just blend. It's going to look like it's going to blend into this bottom panel. And when I get finished, it's going to look like it just kind of fades. This line is going to fade into a single flat panel right here. And you see that on fiberglass boats all the time where uh, you'll have a, a crease that will just sort of uh, disappear into a flat section like that. Uh, when you're making a fiberglass mold, it's easy to make the boat look however you want to make it. But uh, I can do that with the plywood also. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be bonding those pieces in. Uh, I've got one for each side. And uh, the grooves right there and right there. You see all those little grooves? I just cut those in with the, uh, uh, the Dremel tool. And that's just to give the epoxy just a little extra surface to bite into. So with all that said... I am going to get busy on that, and I will get back with you here in the next segment. Okay, I'm back. I have those pieces bonded in place, the ones I was showing you earlier. And I think that's going to look uh, pretty decent. This line right here is going to just sort of fade away, sort of blend into what will look like uh, just one single panel right here. And, of course, I'm going to... Uh, take some uh, fairing compound and just sort of uh, feather this back right here to kind of just blend all this together and I think that's going to look pretty decent and I think that will probably even look better than the way I had originally planned to do that with these little pieces right here so those can get uh, put on the scrap pile and I'll use them for something else uh, just always good to have a Few little small pieces like that laying around got both sides done and as you can see i've got a lot of clamps on these because that piece is un in under a little bit of torsion got a little bit of a twist on it so uh, we'll just leave those clamps on there until morning i'll come out and check it and uh, 
then uh, once I get all the clamps off, you'll have a little bit better uh, picture in your mind's eye of what that's going to look like. All right, folks, I will see you in the morning. Okay, folks, it is morning, and this is what I was talking about right here. I'm going to uh, merge these two panels together where it makes it look as though they are blending into one single panel up here. Now I still have to uh, blend back right in here at this seam. Uh, I'll probably get some uh, wood flour and then just uh, feather that back and uh, make that one nice smooth continuous surface right there cover that edge right there. And then uh, up here same thing I'll just uh, come up and uh, on this end and uh, fill some of the little voids right here. There's, there's a few little voids there from the uh, uh, epoxy. Epoxy didn't quite fill everything up but I'll come back over that and uh, blend all this together. And like I said, I think that I think that'll look uh, maybe even better than the way I'd planned on doing it. So just got more work to do. We're gonna wait until that plane goes over. And we're right on the approach path to Alliance Airport. And yeah, it is annoying sometimes. But uh, go to uh, do some finish sanding over here on this side. As you can see, I haven't touched this one. I just took the clamps off. And uh, I've got to do to this side what I did over there. So, uh, all right, just a lot of work. All right, see you in the next segment. Hey, folks, you're probably wondering what's with the five gallon bucket and the. Uh, screen wire on top of the bucket. And what I'm doing right here, I've been collecting the sawdust whenever I uh, get into any major sanding work on this boat and uh, a lot of times I'll just have a just a pile of sawdust left so I just scoop it off into a cup and what I'm doing right now is I'm sifting it through the screen wire in order to make wood flour and uh, wood flour is another uh, thickening agent that can be used uh, with the epoxy resin to thicken it and uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stir this back and forth on top of the screen till I get the uh, finer particles sifted through and I'll use what's in that bucket then to make to make this and this is actually very very fine it's almost like flour um, it's, a, it's, it's very fine sawdust and uh, this is just a byproduct of a lot of my sanding and uh, like I said whenever I notice that you know, I've got a lot of that stuff uh, collected I just scoop it over into a cup and uh, then what I'm going to do like I said I'm going to sift it and what I'm going to use that for Instead of using the uh, fumed silica or cabosil, I'm going to use that wood flour to make my fairing compound right here. And I'm doing that so that it will be the same color and consistency as the rest of this plywood right here. I've never used wood flour before. I've always used the uh, cabosil or uh, fumed silica. But uh, I'm going to give the wood flower a try and we'll see how it works. So, that's what's with the five gallon bucket. And uh, with all that said, I will let you know how that turns out. Okay, that's it. I've used that sifted uh, sawdust there instead of the usual cabosil. Looks a little coarse, I don't know. I may have to just order the regular wood flower product but hey you know what it's cosmetic and um, you know I'm just trying to fair this area out trying to feather this this end with this piece and um, that's nothing right there that's structural and uh, nothing I can't fix if that doesn't turn out so you know sometimes you have to experiment a little bit and that's not a critical uh, structural area right there so yeah, we'll just see how it looks in the morning. See you then. Okay, folks, welcome back. As you can see, I've been sanding on this. And uh, it looks okay, but that homemade 
wood flour was just a little bit coarse and it did result in some pitting right here which not going to hurt a thing I mean I can uh, just skim over that with some more fairing compound and I went on ahead and uh, ordered the uh, wood flour product from Boat Builder Central out in uh, Fort Pierce Florida and I'm just waiting on that to arrive and when it gets here I'm just going to make uh, some more fairing compound out of the actual wood flour and uh, I'll probably just put a little skim coat on it all from about right here back to here just feather that out and get that nice and smooth and once that's done then it'll be on to the next step which is making the bottom panels so we will see you later And just like that, I'm back. Sun's going down, so I'm getting ready to get out here and work a little bit. I'm going to bond this rib in place. As you can see, I got the lightning holes cut, and I explained that in a previous video. Just uh, take some material out just to reduce weight, and it reduces weight without compromising strength. And as you notice right here, I've got some little notches or grooves, whatever you want to call them, cut out right there. And that's a drain path. And I'm going to bond. There's little pieces of uh, PVC in place. They're going to go on either side of the kill beam right here. And uh, that's actually going to be up against the bottom of the boat. And uh, since this is going to be kind of like a, a little bilge area right through here once the bottom skin's on, I can't have water getting in there and just sitting because I am going to have an access hatch somewhere in this area because I'll have a, a bow-mounted trolling motor on this boat. So. I have to be able to access the bottom side of the casting deck in this area. So, therefore, I'm going to have to install a hatch. And uh, hatches, well, usually that means you're going to get water uh, inside of the uh, that compartment. And uh, regardless of how well they seal or how well you think they seal, those hatches leak. And so we've got to have a way to get the water out. And I will probably either run a drain all the way back or I'll just uh, have a bilge pump just for this area right here. Now the rest of the boat uh, it's going to have a flotation foam from the bulkhead back to the stern. I'm going to, I don't know if you can see that here right now, I'm jumping a little bit ahead of myself but from uh, the floor down to the bottom of the boat that's going to be filled with flotation foam but this area is going to be left open, uh, no foam in here because this is where my battery is going to be and uh, like I said I need to uh, access this compartment here on account of the uh, trolling motor that I'm going to mount on the bow. Alright, so I need to stop talking I need to start bonding. I will see you in the next segment. And just like that it is in. Got my little drain tubes bonded in place just waiting on this epoxy to set up. And I mentioned earlier that I made these this rib right here just a little bit wider to uh, kick out a, a little reverse curve that I noticed in it the other day and uh, got this line now nice and straight just maybe kind of a little bit of a gentle outboard curve right there and that's fine that's what I wanted all right I will check on this in the morning and I will see you then and good morning folks game set match this rib is in epoxy's all set up I do have to make another one similar to this for that section right there. I don't know if you can see where that slot's cut out. But the stringers and the keel beam are already slotted for that rib and I just have to make it. It's kind of on the back burner just a little bit. One other thing I have to do uh, on account of the drainage is I'm just going to have to uh, come in here somewhere and just kind of uh, uh, maybe make a little indentation right here take some material out right where you see my finger that's so that water doesn't stand in just one compartment I don't want to seal uh, this half of the boat or this half of the boat where uh, water can't drain from one side to the other because I'll probably put a bilge pump either in this half or in this half but you want the water to be able to flow between these two sides of the uh, center keel beam there so like I said I'll probably just come in here and uh, just take a little material out and that's just for drainage. Alright folks next segment. And one other thing I have to do I mentioned previously that 
I had uh, rounded off this corner on this side of the boat. I've got to do the same over here. I've actually got to cut off the uh, pieces that are overhanging right here and then get this side rounded off and I put some tape in place. One thing about Marani plywood, it is bad about splintering when you cut it and uh, laying some tape down uh, along your cut line that just helps to uh, minimize the splintering when you're cutting it with a saw because I cut that with a pull saw and uh, that just seems to work best. So, alright, uh, we'll get right on it. See you in a moment. Okay, and that is done. Got this other corner trimmed and routed, or I should say trim and rounded off, not routed. But um, yeah, it's just a lot of little cosmetic issues here that need to be taken care of, and um, I'll be working on those here probably this weekend, and uh, then I will get my quarter inch plywood out right here uh, got a piece that's already trimmed down I think this is 31 inches and um, the way I'm going to do this I'm going to be able to use two sheets to cover the bottom and uh, it's going to require uh, a little bit of creativity but I'll show you that as we go along I uh, won't go into the details on that right now but um, as you can see before I start bonding the bottom panels in place I've got a little bit of cleanup to do. Alright folks, we will see you later. 